everybody, it's Morgan and welcome to The Dove's Nest. Today I'm going to be showing you what we're doing this week in Tot School. So I'm just going to start at the top of our work boxes and work my way down. If you're curious to see a little bit how I use work boxes, I will be sure to link that video above. But let's go ahead and get started because this could be a long video. So first up we have religion. Now our theme this week is Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ love me. And our focus scripture is John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. So we will be reciting this every day. We are learning a new song this week. It's called Heavenly Father Loves Me. And I have some song visuals here. I have this big one and then all of these little ones. And I will link the lyrics to this song down below because it's really cute and ties in with our science theme, which is the five senses. Um, so this song has to do with hearing the song of a bird, feeling the rain on your face, um, smelling the lilac tree, um, seeing the beautiful wings of a butterfly. It's just the most darling little song. So I'll be sure to link the song um, with the lyrics below. So we will be singing that every day. Um, one of the days for our lesson, I also have this Heavenly Father and Jesus Loves Me. Um, I call them sticker books. It's not really a sticker book. It's kind of a file folder game. Um, and so I will also be sure to link where I got this below on Etsy. So it opens up and there are blank spots for all of the little pieces. It goes with the song that we are learning this week. So as you sing the words to the song, you just put the stickers in. Whenever I hear the song of a bird um, or look at the blue, blue sky, Whenever I feel the rain on my face um, or the wind as it rushes by. Whenever I touch a velvet rose or walk by a lilac tree. I'm glad that I live in this beautiful world Heavenly Father created for me. And then there is a second verse to the song, but this little sticker book is just um, one of the activities we'll be doing to learn about reasons we know a Heavenly Father loves us. I also have another little file folder game that we will be doing another day after our lesson. And this is just the Jesus Loves Me file folder game. And it comes with all of these little children that you can just, you know, sort of stick on because we know that Jesus loves all of the little children. Um, so I think there are actually 12 little children. There's quite a few children. Um, another day, we are going to be learning about the reasons we know Heavenly Father and Jesus love us because of all the people in our lives who love us. And so in my house, I have a gallery wall and it's filled with photos of our family, our extended family and close friends. So we're just going to walk through the gallery wall and talk about all of the people that love us. And then lastly, to sort of go along with Heavenly Father and Jesus love me, but not just us, that he loves all of the children of the world. I have a Children of the World file folder game. Um, it's from the same company, the Green Carrots with Jello on Etsy, which I will link below. But I have made this file folder game three separate times, and we keep losing it because my kids love it. Um, you open it up, and it's got little children sort of in their tank tops and their underoos, and then you can dress them up with their hats, their shoes, their clothing, um, and it's sort of like cultural style clothing, so all of the children of the world. And I have no idea where any of the three that I have made are, so it looks like I'm going to have to print a new one before Friday because I have that on the schedule for Friday. So that is what we are doing this week for religion. Next will be language development, and this week for Abeka's language development visuals, we will be using this one called God Made Me, and they have the lessons broken down so that it's one lesson broken down into five parts. Um, and then they're just sort of talking about, he gave me my eyes, he gave me my hands to help, he gave me you know, all of these things um, that make me special and able to um, sing his praises in this world. So we're going to be doing that from Abeka. We are also going to be doing a few things um, that talk about why my children are individually special. And so, we're also doing a few activities that talk about why my children are individually special. And so when my son was maybe 12 months old or so, I made him this file folder game. Um, and it's just a very easy learning his name. Um, his name is Covey. And so we're going to practice spelling his name, C-O-V-E-Y. Um, this right here, I've actually used black puff paint 
and so it's got a texture so he can practice tracing his name. It's a little bit tactile. Then I have these letters um, that I've cut out and put Velcro on so he can practice that. And then down here I have a space to write the name and because we're not really focusing on handwriting this year, we're just gonna use letter magnets and put the letter magnets on there and build it again similarly to the cards. If he wants to try writing it, I will let him. Um, and then I also have one for my daughter just so she can play with. Um, next, we are going to be using for language development. Um, I have, I have any, this little pencil box here, um, all of our magnetic alphabet letters, and I'm just for now using the uppercase letters. But I created just a little printable that has letters in my name and letters not in my name. And so we're just going to put this on a cookie sheet, let him draw a letter and decide where it goes, um, if it's in his name or not in his name. And then lastly, again, we're not really focusing on handwriting, um, and it looks like they've already gotten into this one, but I did print up um, just this little sheet that he can trace the letters on. Now, I made this with myself with a free font that I found, so I will be sure to link that font down below if you're interested in making something similar. So I have the C-O-V and then the E-Y on the back. Um, so that's something he will be doing. Um, for science this week, we are still studying the human body, but we are focusing on the five senses. And so for language development, we will also be playing a five senses bingo. And um, we'll draw a little card, and then if they have it, he can put his little placeholder right here on the card. So those are our language development visual activities. Again, Abeka kind of gave us some direction, but we're incorporating our own things. Um, and next we have phonics. So. The way the Aveca program is, it sort of takes forever to really get started doing the alphabet. I think for the two-year-olds, it takes seven weeks. You don't even start learning the letter A until seven weeks in. And it's three weeks for the three-year-old program. So we're finally at week three. I think there was one extra week of something and you don't start the letter A until week four. I just got rid of all of it because I was so sick of it. Um, and I really wanted to get started on learning our letters. Um, so for our phonics activities this week, we are going to be reading Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. We are studying just all of the letters. We're learning that there is an alphabet and that all of the letters are in the alphabet. Um, so we have Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. And then we will be using, um, again, our magnetic letters and these little letter mats. So I found these letter mats on Pinterest. They're from someone called My Fabulous Class. Now I have heavily modified these. She had one mat with maybe um, six or seven letters. And I wanted my son to learn the whole alphabet and be able to sort uh, his magnetic letters into the whole alphabet. And so I erased everything that she had in the white space. I essentially just kept her tree and the border and um, created it. So there's 13 letters on each mat. So, um, so on Monday, we're going to be doing set A. On Tuesday, I have set B. Um, and both of those are uppercase letters. And then I also created two sets of lowercase letters. So I have set C and set D. So that takes us Monday through Thursday. And then on Friday, again, we will be reading Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. And then I got this a long time ago on Amazon. I've obviously never done anything with it. But it is this giant um, ah, palm tree wall decal. Um, and so we're going to be setting this up in our top school room so that, oh, I guess here's a close up of what it looks like when it's all set up. It comes with coconuts and monkeys and other little things you can add to it. But every week as we go through our top school curriculum and learn a new letter, we will be adding a letter to our Chicka Chicka Boom Boom tree. And so I just have these little felt letters that I got from the Target Dollar Spot. I don't even know, three years ago or something. So we are going to be putting those to good use. Okay, another activity we're going to be doing, again, we have our uppercase letter magnets, and then I also have a set of the lowercase letter magnets um, that we will use with the lowercase chicka chicka boom boom sheets. But we are going to throw all of those together in sort of a big bin. And then I have these letters that I got from earlylearningideas.com and these are little sorting mats and so it helps
helps us to look at the characteristics of each letter and to sort them. And so we might work on I see letters with curves. And so we'll go through and put all of the letters that we have with curves. And I'm probably not gonna give him all 52 magnets, um, maybe just a small handful, and then he can do a small handful for each. Um, but I see letters with curves, I see letters with straight lines, diagonal lines, letters with holes. Um, there's letters with tails, tall letters, short letters, um, again, a letters in my name, lowercase letters, uppercase letters, letters with vertical lines, and letters with horizontal lines. So that could be just kind of a fun, independent, quiet time activity. Maybe when I'm putting the baby down for a nap, he can work on something like that. Um, we also have another file folder game. You guys, you know I love me my file folder games. This one is from totschooling.net, and it's just a chicka chicka boom boom file folder game. And so it's got all of the little um, palm trees, and then each of these little Velcro pieces is just the letter, and he can figure out, they're in alphabetical order, but he can figure out where they go and line up the letters, um, the coconut letters. And then just a few other hands-on activities that we have. I have all of these alphabots from Lakeshore Learning, and right now my son is obsessed with transformers. So these are really fun. For example, this is the letter Q, and, um, oh gosh. And so, you know, the little Q transforms into these little robots. They all kind of transform, but it's a, just a really fun kind of hands-on, you know, little activity for little hands to do um, those alphabots. So I've got all of those. Something else we're going to be doing just sort of as a craft and activity time are these little stampers. We may do something with that, maybe just have them go through and stamp the alphabet or just practice um, maybe coloring a picture um, with the stamp pad just to get some use out of these letters. And then, and then lastly, for sort of a phonics activity, we have our Melissa and Doug alphabet puzzle. And so we'll let him go through and again, just sort of match the letters and um, get some use out of this puzzle. For math this week, we are focusing on Chicka Chicka 1, 2, 3. So it's a Chicka Chicka Boom Boom week. Um, so we'll be reading this probably on Monday and then maybe again on Thursday or Friday and um, do some activities every day that have to do with the Chicka Chicka Boom Boom 1, 2, 3. And again, we have our little number magnets here from Lakeshore Learning. So we'll just throw these on a cookie sheet and do some number sorting, which will be really fun. And so I have that for Monday. We will read and do one of the letter maps, probably set A. Next, again, to just sort of um, get us involved in numbers, I have really been struggling with a math curriculum. Um, and after researching loads and loads of math curriculum, I know what I plan on using next year and for the next couple of years. Um, I don't like really math workbooks and I don't like curriculum that teach counting as sort of the base for numbers. And so the more I see curriculum that have to do with number sense and really learning place value and being able to visualize the number concept or what the number represents, um, the more I think we're really going to take our math in that direction um, because it gives a better base for mental math. I cannot do math in my head to save my life. And in college, I went up to calculus three, um, but without a calculator, I'm lost. My husband is a numbers guy and he just knows numbers and we've talked about it and it's because he learned math very differently than I did. And so one of the, I don't even know if it's really a trend, but one of the ways of teaching math that I have um, come across is through subitizing. And I think I talked about this a little bit in my curriculum video, which I will again link up here. Um, but I found from this reading mama these subitizing number cards. And all that is, it's just teaching different representations of numbers. And so you'll see here the number one, the finger one, we have the unifix cube, the 10 frame, the popsicle stick, and then the actual written word one. Now I've also gone on to make my own, I haven't printed them yet, um, rec and rec cards, if you've seen those, they are the little, they look like the abacus, the red and white, but it's only got the two rows of beads. Um, we will be using rec and recs this year, so I've made little place value cards. I should show you, I have the whole bag 
of cards here for numbers um, 1 through 10. These are all out of order. So numbers 1 through 10, I have these cards, and we will just be doing sorting and matching activities. Um, anytime we play games, even Candyland now, we don't draw the regular cards. Um, I, I printed two sets of these cards, and so I have these that are just the individual numbers, and then I printed a second set and laminated them, and we use these for everything. Anytime we are playing a game and we need a dice or a number, um, we are using these cards. I also have printed dominoes cards, dice cards, and uno cards, sort of as other representations of these numbers, just to really kind of hit home that you know, one doesn't just mean one. It can be uh, represented a bunch of different ways. So we just like to use these and play games. Um, we may follow along with some of the things that Becca has in the um, lesson plans, you know, just sort of talking about the numbers. Um, we will, of course, be using the number concept cards and the Abeka flashcards that we have to just sort of, again, introduce numbers. So that's one of the activities we're going to be doing. Um, I also have... I also have the Melissa and Doug numbers puzzle, so we'll be doing this um, for one of our activities next week. And then another hands-on activity I have for numbers, again from Lakeshore Learning, are these number locks. And so we have all of these different locks. They have the written number on the front and then a number concept on the back, just stars. These go 1 through 20, so I'm just going to pull out 1 through 10 because that's all we're focusing on this year. So again, you just sort of match up. This is the number 2, the written word 2, and the number concept. And once you find those, you put the key in the lock, and you twist it, and the lock opens. And what's really fun is all of the keys are different. All of the locks are different colors. Um, so this is a really fun little hands-on um, game for learning numbers. Now we also have more numbers activities coming that have to do with our science unit, so I'll talk to the, I'll talk about those when I get there. So for our skills development, we have um, our spectrum workbooks for cut. Um, we are going to be doing Hungry Harry. What we do is we're going to practice cutting a straight line across Harry's mouth. Then we're going to get some glue practice because they will glue each piece to a brown paper bag and practice feeding Harry. That will be really fun. Next we have our Let's Learn to Trace. And we're going to be doing... We did fishing. We are going to be doing these seals on slides. So we're going to start practicing some zigzag tracing. And then lastly we have our pasting practice and we are doing the Funny Farm page. So again, this was like the one we did previously, um, where they're going to cut out each of these pieces, arrange them, um, sort of solve the puzzle, and then glue them down to this sheet. Okay, moving right along to science. Now, this week we are still staying on our human body theme, but we are studying the five senses. And when I created our science unit studies, I sort of just had ideas, this is what I want to study, during the course of a month, and then I broke it down into um, focusing on specific topics each week, and then broke that down into three days a week. But aside from that, I don't really have any clear direction or lessons, and I've kind of found that I'm floundering a little bit. So I was so excited to actually find a full kit <laughs> from one of the mom preschool bloggers that I follow on Pinterest, and so I purchased the whole kit from Teachers Pay Teachers, which I will be sure to link below. I can't. Ex can't remember who it is, dang it, but um, I think it's topschooling.com, but I will be sure to link it below. So anyway, starting with the five senses, on Monday we are going to be reading Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See, the see and slide version, which is so much fun. Um, and then in that kit, she had little sequencing cards, and so I just turned them into little puppets by putting them on popsicle sticks. And so we can go through and as we talk about each specific animal that Brown Bear Brown Bear sees, you know, we will just hold up the puppets in that sequence. Um, with this, we are also going to be um, reading for math our Math Start book about sequencing. Now, um, I don't remember if I really mentioned it. I mentioned that we have read these books before, or at least one of them, um, in a previous week of Tot School. These are the most amazing books, and I'm going to be doing a separate video review on these books. Um, 
but they are so perfect for preschool math, the level one, um, and just giving very easy and gentle introductions into math concepts. So we're going to be doing our sequencing cards and reading our rabbit's pajama party all about sequencing. On Tuesday for science, we are focusing on sound. So we are going to be reading this book called The Listening Walk. Um, and then we're actually going to go outside, just go for a walk in our backyard, and we're going to listen for things and talk about the things we hear. We might blindfold ourselves just to sort of see if that really helps us hone in on those listening skills. Um, but we've got this. And then, where is it? Oh. And then I also was able to purchase these little jars at the Dollar Tree, and we're going to be using these a lot this week. So I'm going to fill each jar with um, something different, rice, little jingle bells left over from Christmas, maybe some rocks, um, just different things, and we're going to shake them and just sort of hear how they sound different in these little jars. We can't see what they are because that's not important. It's important to hear how they're different. Um, and then we also may pull out our Melissa and Doug music set and play with just the different musical instruments. Yeah, baby. Uh-huh. On Wednesday, we are going to bring back our jars and we are focusing on smell. So I'm going to be filling each of these jars with something different. Um, I have some lemons that I'll be cutting up. One will have Play-Doh. There will be some cinnamon, some flowers. Um, I might spray my perfume into one of them, and we're just going to sort of put our noses in and smell the different smells and talk about them, talk about how our nose does the smelling. Um, and then we are also going to be making Play-Doh. Uh, my son's preschool teacher sent him home with this little packet of DIY, DIY fun things for summertime, and one of the recipes was for Play-Doh. So we're going to be making some scented Play-Doh, maybe some apple cinnamon or some lemon or whatever essential oils or food extracts I can find that have a very particular smell, we will be making just some scented Play-Doh. Um, on Thursday, we are going to be studying taste. And so again, we're just going to be using these and filling them with different things. So I have sugar, salt, lemon juice, and cocoa powder. And so we're just gonna sort of take a little spoonful of each and taste the different things, taste how they taste differently on our tongues, if we can taste them in different spots. Um, and just talk about the different tastes. So obviously they're sweet, salty, sour, and bitter there. So, you know, the five areas of your tongue. And then lastly for our touch jars again on Friday, we are going to be talking about items with different textures. Now we do have quite a few at the Usborne um, That's Not My book series, and those are so great for little tiny hands. They're full of different textures on every page, but we're gonna be, I've got some water beads, um, some cooked spaghetti noodles, uh, some rocks, some cotton balls, just different textures of things that we can put in here. He's just gonna reach his hand in and touch it. And we're gonna talk about the different textures that he feels. Um, so that's sort of our science activity. Now again, that packet that I got, um, mentioned the sequencing. Um, I talked about our language development, how it also had the bingo cards, but they have so many more activities. So we also have these five senses sorting mats. So there's the mats, and then there are, um, there's different little cards that go with them. So there's like a singing, there's the actual pictures of ears, nose, mouth, eyes kind of thing. Um, there's pictures of cell phones, of flowers, of bells, and you just sort of sort which of the senses that it goes with. Um, so we will be doing that sorting and with the sorting activity, we're also going to be reading the Math Start, the Three Little Firefighters sorting. So um, lots of really good math concepts right there. Next, we are going to be talking about patterning. And I thought it was so much fun that she included all of these different pattern blocks for us to use with our Unifix cubes. And so she's got different AB patterns, more AB patterns, there's so many. Um, and then we've got ABB patterns, you know, all kinds of different ones, ABC patterns. So we will be talking about those with our Unifix cubes blocks. And again, we are going to be reading Beep Beep Vroom Vroom, all about patterning. Next, we have clip cards and a memory game that all came with it. It was the five senses memory game and then all of the little different 
clip cards. So you see a cell phone, obviously it would be the ear because you talk about it, the rainbow, it would clip to your eyes. Um, so just little matching activities. And then with that, we are going to be reading the Math Start, A Pair of Socks. And this is a matching book just to reinforce those concepts. Now, we are still, for our colors and shapes, we still had a few activities that we didn't get to last week. One is just the strawberry coloring page. Um, and then we had the circle coloring page. And then we still haven't done this color red activity page. And these again are from the Spectrum Colors and Shapes book. Um, so we're just gonna be doing that a little bit. Again, my son knows his colors. He's three and a half. He knows all about the colors. Um, and then we're going to be doing a sensory bin. And so this, is, this isn't my actual sensory bin. I've got a clear one, but I just sort of went through our playroom and found all of the red things that I could find. Um, I have this little red object too, little gas carton thing. And so I'll be putting all of this into a clear bin. And then I made this red rice. It's really easy. Um, I'll link the recipe or I'll type out the recipe below if you're interested in making colored rice. Um, and so we're going to be just doing a red sensory bin and seeing where that takes us. And then lastly, for gross and fine motor skills, obviously, um, those clip cards again are going to be fine motor skills. So we'll be doing those on Monday and Wednesday. And then on Tuesday and Thursday is when we do our gross motor skills. And right now we're just swimming because it's pretty warm here. And so we'll jump out in the backyard and swim in the pool. Um, and so that's sort of what we're doing for our gross motor skills. And then Friday, I don't have anything planned for Friday. Um, Something else I did want to mention um, is our singing time. I will be making a video talking about uh, just kind of how we do singing time or opening exercises, circle time, whatever you wanna call it, calendar time. Um, so I will film a video of us doing that and then be sure to mention the songs that we do every single day. Um, but we are also going to be including some songs from the Bright Kids Library. And those songs are I Have 10 Toes cutest song in the world. My little brother used to sing it all the time, um, but it's just kind of a body part song that starts at your toes and works your way up to your head. It's really cute. Um, there's one called Eyes Were Made For Seeing, I Wiggle My Torso, and that's it. As usual, if you're interested in staying along this journey with us, be sure to click that subscribe button, and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.